Gateway Church and to all of our Facebook and YouTube virtual partners. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I certainly hope that you and your families had a wonderful Thanksgiving, safe and enjoyable and fulfilling in every way. And I'm so glad that you're here with us today, joining us in our virtual worship service. In today's message, it is a final flashback from 2019 in my sermon entitled, The God Shift. It is a right now word that I believe is a perfect conclusion to our current series, The Potter Clay Relationship. You know, the God Shift message, when I prepared it, I truly believe that it was worth listening to over and over again, especially in 2020. God infused my spirit with this pronouncement over your life because of the will of God. The wheel of God is preparing you and I for something that is major. Something major is about to take place inside of our lives. The part of clay relationship and experience is about a process which reveal that God is about to shift some things around in our favor. Now that's enough to get happy about right there. The crisis of 2020 have some people concluding that they are finished that they can't come back from this COVID crisis and that, and that they are on their way out. But I'm here to tell you today, God is turning things around on your behalf. There is a shift that is taking place in the atmosphere and in the spiritual realm. Today, we will continue to learn critical insights from the nation of Israel's history with God. Because just like Israel, 2020 is a year that we as a nation are adjusting to our new normal. And as Christians, we are people that are called by God. And we must embrace this God shift moment in biblical prophecy. So my word to you today as I conclude this series is don't miss your shift. <laughs> Keep viewing. You don't want to miss this message because there is a unique tailored word from God that's just for you. So embrace this transforming message, enjoy it, comment on it, and share it with a friend. That's your responsibility as an evangelist in the earth. And after the praise team and liturgical dance by Yara comes and ushers us into the presence of the worship of God, we will come right back and go right into the message. So Gateway Church, 
Facebook and YouTube partners. As always, you are the most awesome people in all of the world. Lady Kathy and I love you dearly, and there is nothing you can do about it. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of the service. We bless your matchless name. Because you're worthy, God. Yes.
My hallelujah belongs only to you. So my hallelujah, my hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah, my hallelujah belongs to you. You deserve it. Put your hands together once again for Yada, Sister Lee. Thank you so very much. How many know that God will rescue you? He doesn't leave you alone. I need you to embrace that inside of your spirit. 
Because many times when we go through things, we feel alone, especially when people can't relate to what we're going through. And sometimes you can't feel God. Sometimes you can't see God. Sometimes you can't even hear God. But I like what Job said. I can't see you. I can't feel you. But I know that you know where I am. How many know that God knows where you are? Come on, put your hands together. Love on him again this morning. If you have your Bibles, and I hope you do, turn with me to the book of Joshua, chapter 5. We're going to take a look at verse 6 through 9 as our foundational text. And then we'll go over to chapter 6 of Joshua, reading verses 1 through 2, as we are concluding our series this month on the other side of midnight. Joshua, chapter 5, verses 6 through 9, and then we'll go over to chapter 6, reading verses 1 through 2. For the children of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness till all the people who were men of war who came out of Egypt were consumed because they did not obey the voice of the Lord to whom the Lord swore that he would not show them the land which the Lord had sworn to their fathers that he would give us a land flowing with milk and honey. Then Joshua circumcised their sons whom he raised up in their place for they were uncircumcised because they had not been circumcised on the way so it was when they had finished circumcising all of the people that they stayed in their place in the camp till they were healed then the lord said to joshua this day i have rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you. Therefore, the name of the place is called Gilgal to this day. Chapter 6, verse 1 through 2. Now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out, none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand, its king, and the mighty men of valor. Then the Lord, in verse 9, chapter 5, says to Joshua, Today I will roll away the reproach of Egypt from you. I'm going to talk to you this morning from the topic, The God Shift. Say it with me, the God shift. There are some things that God is about to roll away out of your life. The God shift is the key to your turnaround. Nothing can happen until God shifts some things around on your behalf. The word of the Lord uses the word reproach. God says, I'm going to roll away the reproach of Egypt. What did that mean? Reproach means disgrace. It means discredited or disproval. It means to become obsolete. What God was saying to Israel, and I need you to hear me well and apply this to your own personal life. What was once disgraced, God is going to turn into glory. What was once discredited and once feeling disapproved, God says, I'm going to approve of you. Once was called obsolete, as if you didn't matter anymore, God said you are going to become relevant. It is when you've been counted out, God said, it is not over, he said, because I'm about to shift some stuff around for you. You see, we, we can go through a lifetime sitting on the sidelines in reproach, watching extraordinary things happen, feeling held back because of our past experiences, or... You can step in faith into God, the God shift moment that he is allowing in your life right now. The shift that will lead and guide you into a greater hope and into a greater future. Somebody say the God shift. Today, God has sent me to tell you that he is about to shift things around in your favor. Now that should have been, I should have got an amen right there. 
Because I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you've been challenged with. But hear God's word this morning. God says to you, a God shift is about to take place. God is about to shift things around in your favor. So don't you fear. Don't you worry. Don't be in anxiety. The God shift is here. Can I get four people to give me a clap offering this morning? People may have already concluded that you're finished. They may have already concluded that you will never amount to anything. They may be saying to themselves that you're on your way out, but God is turning things around on your behalf. And there is a shift. You've got to understand there's a shift that's taking place in the atmosphere. There is a shift that's taking place inside the spiritual realm. And I want you to tell your neighbor and speak with full authority. Don't miss your shift. If you're listening on live stream, I want you to hear him in the word of God. I want you to hear this out of your spirit. God is shifting things around for you. Don't you miss your shift. I don't care how long you've been going through it. I don't care what you've been going through. God is saying, I'm about to remove the reproach from upon you. I'm about to shift some things around in your favor. If you believe God this morning, give God a great amen and a wonderful hand clap offering in this house. Now we can learn from the nation of Israel's history with God. And so I want to bring this series to a conclusion this morning as we take a look at the final look at, the, at a reproach nation that's in transition. A nation adjusting to their new normal. A nation in the God shift. Now you must understand that the God shift for Israel was about God's timing and his tactics. Say it with, say it with me. It's about God's timing and God's tactics. See, it's not your way, it is God's way. It is not God, your will, it's God's will. It's not your strategy, it's got to be God's strategy. When you get inside the God shift, it is about God's timing and it's about God's strategy. So look at your neighbor and say, I got to die to myself. You see, Israel had just crossed over Jordan with 40,000 soldiers leading the way. They had the advantage of a surprise attack. And no one in the region of Canaan could have predicted what God was going to do for Israel at Jericho. God parted the waters of the Jordan at high season so they could cross over without risk or delay. Please hear me this morning. Normally, the men would have had to go miles out of the way to cross over Jordan. Or they would have had to wait for the waters to recede to lower levels. They did not anticipate that the waters of Jordan were split even though they had heard what God had done at the Red Sea. Look at your neighbor and say, if God did it then, God will do it now. Come on and look at somebody and say, you may have gone through some stuff in the past. You need to look back what God brought you through because whatever you're facing, if he brought you through your Red Sea, God is going to bring you through your Jordan. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm in my God shift this morning. Oh my God, I wish I had a few people here that was about to embrace this message this morning. You see, you have to understand this thing. They, they did not anticipate the waters of Jordan that it was split. Now you need to understand now that even though they had heard about what God had done at the Red Sea, what God wanted them to see now was that they were going to experience the hand of God, the first hand, in their backyard. You see, they heard about what he'd done over there. But now God was coming in their backyard. You need to understand this now. So God wanted them to see who he was all about and who he is. Now as we begin to take a look at this story, we find out something about God's ways. We find out that as they begin to look at God, do these miracles in their backyard, it caused their hearts to melt. And there was no spirit in them any longer because of the sons of Israel. It was God shifting things on behalf of Israel. Watch this. Before Israel was even aware that a shift in the enemy's view had even taken place. You've got to understand. You may not see what God is doing, but God has already prepared your enemies to fear you. Oh my God, my God, you need to understand that as you're working toward where God is carrying you, that God has already prepared the ground for your victory. We're going to get to it in a minute now. See, God is shifting anything that has been holding you down and holding you back. 
The Holy Spirit is about to visit you with a great power and with great anointing, giving you a new clarity and a new awareness and new wisdom. The question is, are you ready? Are you ready for the God shift? Are you ready for what God is about to bring into your midst? You see, God is shifting you into position for the promise that you've been praying for. But hear me well. Sometimes a God shift looks like chaos. Sometimes a God shift looks like a setback. Sometimes a God shift even looks like defeat. But God is saying to you, when the dust settles, you will understand why you had to go through what you've been through. Look at somebody say, the dust might be rising high now, but when the dust settles, God's going to be on the other side of this thing. Tell somebody right now, don't you fear and don't you be in anxiety. Your chaos is about to pass you by because God, it's about to shift some stuff around for you. Can somebody give God praise and celebrate your shift this morning? You see, if you're in the middle of your shift, you've already noticed that change is happening that don't make sense. See, when a God shift starts, your whole world can seem to turn upside down. And all hell can seem like it's breaking loose and wave after wave of tests feel like they're going to be your punishment. But when a God shift takes place, it can be very uncomfortable. It can be very unreasonable. Those feelings are natural. Tell somebody, that's a natural feeling. But God needs you to shift from natural into the supernatural because he's positioning you for breaking Satan's grip over your life and over your future. Look at somebody and say, I got to move out of the natural into the supernatural. Oh my God, my God. I wish I had five people, just five, five over here. Tell somebody, I got to move out of the natural into the supernatural. Come on, over here. I got to move out of the natural into the supernatural. Right here. I got to move out of the natural into the supernatural. Because see, that's where God is. God is in the supernatural. And if you're looking for your miracle, you got to get out of flesh and you got to get in the spirit. Oh my God, watch this now, watch this now. So here are a few critical points very quickly this morning. I'm wrapping this up today. Here are a few critical points to the spiritual posture that is necessary in your God shift. Are you ready? When your God shift takes place, number one, don't panic. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, don't panic. See, God has already shifted the spiritual atmosphere on your behalf, so don't you panic. See, all you need to do is, watch this, is to refresh your covenant commitment to God and be still. See, that, that's all that you look at somebody and say, I need to refresh my covenant commitment to God and be still. Come on, stay with me. I need to refresh my covenant commitment with God and be still. Watch this now. Joshua chapter 5. Look at verse, verse 1 and 2. Joshua chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. Oh, this, this, this is good stuff right here. Watch this. So it was when all the kings of the Amorites who were on the west side of the Jordan and all the kings of the Canaanites who were by the sea heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of the Jordan from before the children of Israel until we had to cross this, until we had crossed over. Watch this. That their heart melted and there was no spirit in them any longer before the children of Israel. Oh my God. You see, that's why you are where you are. Because the stuff that you're going through, you can't handle in your own capacity. This is because God is about to do an absolute incredible miracle so that your enemies can see the God that you serve. Watch this. Because once they see the God that you serve, then they can see something different in you. And watch this. And once they see the God in you, all of a sudden, they begin to back up. They will start melting. They will start retreating before you even go into battle. Look at somebody and tell them, my God is an awesome God. And if my God is an awesome God, I'm an awesome child. And the world needs to see the awesomeness in me because not of my own listen, will, but because I serve an awesome, almighty God. Can somebody put your hands together and praise him? Well, watch this, verse 8. Verse 8. So it was, when they had finished circumcising all the people, that they stayed in their place in the camp till they were, watch this, healed. 
Watch this now. Then the Lord said to Joshua, this day I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you. Watch this. Before God can do something for you, you got to refresh your covenant. Watch this. Hold on now. Watch this now. Because the fathers who left Egypt were circumcised. But here's what I have a problem with. How is it that they saw the hand of God and they never stood in awe of God? That they were constantly complaining to God or about God. And so the Bible says that he allowed that generation of warriors to die off. And they couldn't inherit the promise of God because they didn't embrace, watch this, the God of the promise. Watch this now. So now Joshua is about to go into war. Watch this now. Because before this time, God was fighting for them. Now God said, I want you to participate. But before you participate, you need to get yourself right. I need you to make a covenant with me. So now he is circumcising the children of the men who didn't make it in. Are you with me? These were the children that were not born in Egypt. They were not, listen, they didn't have bondage as an address. All they saw was the glory of God inside of the wilderness. All, all they saw was the glory of God when they were crossing the Red Sea. All they saw was the glory of God when they were crossing the Jordan. So God said, listen, you got a battle ahead of you. You are now on the outskirts of Canaan, but there's some wars we got to fight. But before you go into war, you got to create, you got to renew your covenant with me. Look at your neighbor and say, before you start fighting any new battles, you got to reconsecrate yourself. You got to put a new covenant together with God. Don't go in the battle with an old covenant you didn't pay any attention to to start with. You got to refresh yourself. That's why in November we're going into a crusade. You don't want to miss this crusade. It's going to be powerful. Look at your neighbor and say, but your crusade starts today. <sighs> watch this now. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. So David said in Psalms 46 and 10, he says, be still and know that I am God. Now, this command, be still, is written in the context of a time of trouble and of warfare. It not only means to rest or relax in who God is, but it also is a wake-up call to be in awe of who God is. When was the last time you were in awe of who God is? Now I can tell you when I can tell when your, your awe ain't up the level. When you start treating each other any kind of way, your awe of God ain't up to level. Because the Bible says, when you've done it to the least of mine, you've done it unto me. And if you're willing to do something to one of God's children, you are not in awe of God. You don't care anything about how God feels about how you're treating one another. Here's the next thing. How can you be in awe of God when you come into a worship service in the presence of God and you don't worship him in spirit and truth? How can you be in awe here when you're finding all kinds of things wrong instead of getting into the form of worship? Listen, when I come into the presence of God, when I come in the congregation of God's people, I'm focusing on God. I'm focusing on what God has done for me. I'm focusing on the God of what he's done for others. I'm focusing on the God that can do all things. The one who made something out of nothing. The God of Genesis. We looked at the sky and he sung the stars of the sky. He created the cosmos. I'm looking in awe of that God. And if he can create all things from nothing look at your neighbor say he can do all things for you but with God nothing is impossible with man it might be impossible but with God all things are possible look to your neighbor and say I can be in all of a God like that watch this now. watch this so the people of God the people of God should interpret the command for themselves to read more like snap out of it come on look at your neighbor and say I don't know what you're going through but snap out of it. You should read it like this. Wake up. And that's to stop fearing. Acknowledge who your God is. Stop worrying about the problem and start looking at the awe of God. All oh God of the problem. Look at this. God is not the focus of your life when you're focusing on your problem. If God is bigger than your problem, focus on God and be in awe of him. Can somebody put your hands together and worship him? But watch this now. The writer David says to be still. Right? Be still and know that I am God. But watch this. Here's your power thought for the day because this is what's necessary for stillness. The awe of God is necessary for stillness in God. You see, that's why many of us get so ruffled under the feathers. 
That's why we can't be still in God. We think we need to move ahead of God. We think we need to do something to help God because you're not in awe of God. If you're in awe of God, then you can be still in God. You can wait on the Lord and be of good courage and know that he'll strengthen your heart. You can wait on God knowing that weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming on in the, in the morning. You can wait on the Lord. You can be still and know that God is God. How many are willing to be still and wait on God to move in your life? I don't care what's going on. I don't care what's setting I put in your way. I don't care the strategies of the enemy. Be still and know that God is and he is a reward of those who diligently seek him. Can somebody give God a praise offering? Oh, I hope I'm talking to somebody this morning. My God, my God, my God. Watch this now, watch this now. You see, when you are in awe of God, there is a reverential respect mixed with fear, wonderment, amazement it will stop you right in your tracks it will take notice of your everything that's going it will take your breath away when you're in awe of God this is why this is this is why God allows situations inside of your life that require his supernatural in, involvement because God wants you to be in awe of him so I said if you can handle it when God handle it then you're not in awe of God because you could have taken care of it yourself but watch this. God will set up a situation where nobody can help you out of. God would have set up a situation where you don't have the capacity to come out of that thing. God will set up a situation. I don't care if you go to the bank, they're going to deny you. You go to a friend, they ain't got no money. Listen, when you go to God and say, God, I've tried everything. Everything that's failed, God said, that's where I need you to be. Because when I fix it, then you will be in awe of me. Look at your neighbor and tell him, I am where I am. Because God is about to do a supernatural work in my life so I can be in awe of him can you put your hands together and love on him <sighs> watch this now in order to in order for God to shift us into position he has to shift us out of certain conditions are you with me see God can't position you where he wants you until he shifts you out of certain conditions I embrace this this morning. These conditions are what prevent our shift. We are waiting for God to shift some things. God said, no, I'm waiting for you to release some things. Watch this now. Watch this now. See, see, God is putting periods where you had question marks. God is closing wrong doors to wrong plans. God is closing wrong relationships. God is closing the door on wrong decisions. God is even closing doors on wrong places that have taken you on a detour from his plan. When things happen, don't panic because God is working it out on your behalf. God is shifting things. So when God begins to close some doors, throw your hands up and give him praise because the door closes because that's not where God wants you that's not what God wants in your life if the pathway is cut off God is trying to transition you to another path look at your neighbor and say I'm gonna thank God no matter what happens to me because I know I'm inside a divine shift oh my god watch this now watch this now here's the second thing first thing I say don't panic here's the second thing in the God shift the second thing is that you got to stand in spirit of discernment and listen you got to stand in the spirit of discernment and listen. Say it with me. Stand in the spirit of discernment and listen. Go with me to Joshua chapter, thir chapter 5, verse 13 through 15. Watch this now. Hallelujah. When you get there, say praise the Lord. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted his eyes and looked and behold, a man stood opposite him with a sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said to him, Are you for us or for the adversary? You got to understand now, if you're not in spiritual discernment, you can miss the God shift. I thank God that Joshua didn't try to slay him because he would have been slain. I thank God he had enough sense to take a step back, ask the right questions, discern the spirit of God. Watch, watch what takes place. So the angel 
said to him, No, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Look at somebody say, God sent him some backup. Oh, you better get this. Listen, in your God shift, God is sending some spiritual backup on your behalf. And even though you're going to be involved, God want to let you know, I got your back. Watch this now. Oh, my God, my God. This, this thing is so powerful. I'm, I'm about to shout all over the place, Dr. Hyde. I'm about to shout all over the place. And so, and Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshiped. Watch this. And said to him, what does my Lord say to his servant? Then the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, watch this. He didn't even give him a message first. He gave him a command. He says, take your sandals off your foot. For the place where you stand is holy. And Joshua did so. Listen to this. You want to hear a word from the Lord. Take your shoes off. Be holy. For I am holy. Don't expect a word from the Lord if you ain't holy. Don't expect a word from the Lord if your life ain't aligned with God's word. Joshua said, what does the Lord say? And hear what the angel say. First, take your shoes off. Recognize that the ground you're standing on is holy ground. Watch this now. And then we, oh my God, my boy, I'm telling you, this thing is about to eat me up right here. Then, then I moved on down to chapter 6, verse 1 and 2. And then he gave him the message. See, see, when you prepare for the message, God will release the message. Come on, tell somebody. When you prepare for the message, God will release the message. So, so, so here, here's my boy. He's taking off his shoes. He's on holy ground. He's reverencing God. And here's what the word of the Lord says. Now Jericho was secured shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out. None came in. And then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hands. It's king and the mighty men of valor. Look at your neighbor and say, God will give you your victory if you recognize his holiness even before you fight. See, they hadn't fought. Listen, they ain't picked up one spear. They haven't picked up one sword. They haven't picked up one shield. And God said, just because you're on holy ground, you did, you prepared yourself. Look over there. What do you see? I see the doors closed. I see nobody coming out. I see nobody going in. Look at your neighbor and say, when you prepare for battle, your spiritual battle, God will send your enemies into their own camp and close them off. Oh my God, my God. God will close them up. You've already won before you even start fighting. All God wants you to do is to get yourself right in your own shift. Look at somebody and tell them, I'm preparing for my God shift. Oh God, my God, my God, my God. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Paul said, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, 13, he challenged them by saying, watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave and be strong. But James added another layer of quality that is needed in your shift in James 1 and 19. He says this, so then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear. Swift to hear and slow to speak, slow to wrath. You know it's a God shift because the Holy Spirit has been whispering to you. So listen, bad situations that would have made you snap are overcome by the peace of God. That's when you know you're in a holy shift. When you look at what God is accomplishing through you beyond your own capacity, you are in a God shift. When you are letting go without losing it, you are in a God shift. You're saying yes to God without even knowing it. You are in a God shift. But watch this. When you choose to wait on the Lord, stand resolute and listen to God, you are in a God shift. But watch this. I want you to tell your neighbor, it don't feel like it. But don't you miss your shift. Because everything I described to you is a part of the God shift. Now, here, watch this. Here's the third thing. I got to let you go. Number one, don't panic. Look at somebody, don't, don't Say, don't panic. Number two, stand in spiritual discernment and listen. But number three, here's the last thing. Watch this. 
Keep your guard shift on the DL. And I'm not talking about down low. I'm talking about divine low. See, God's about to bless you. You can't tell everybody. You can't tell everybody what God is about to do to you. Oh my God, let me give, let me give you this word. See, see, James said, he said, slow to speak. Hear God, but be slow to speak. You see, because when you're in your God shift, you got to pe- keep people on a need-to-know basis. If you're not going where I'm going, you don't need to know. Because everybody that's listening ain't going to support you. Everybody that hear the plan of God revealed through you ain't going to embrace it. Look at somebody and say, you're on a need-to-know basis. Now watch this, now watch this. I, 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 go to Joshua chapter 6. Go to Joshua chapter 6. Lord have mercy, Jesus. Just give me some time. Just give me some time. Chapter 6, look at verse 3. Verse 3. And I'll read till the Lord tell me to stop. Watch this. You shall march around the city. Now watch, see, see God's, give, God's giving them the d- divine shift, that God shift mode. Here's something. You shall march around the city, all you men of war. You shall go all around the city once. This you shall do six days. And seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of rams, horns before the ark. But the seventh day, you shall march around the city seven times, and the priests shall blow their trumpets. And it shall come to pass when they make their long blast with the ram's horn. And when you hear the sound of the trumpet, that all the people will shout with a great shout. Then the wall of the city will come down. Watch this now. Verse 10. Now Joshua had commanded the people saying, You shall not shout, nor make any noise with your voice, nor shall a word proceed out of your mouth until the day I say to you, shout. Look at your neighbor and say, One of the most spiritual things you can do at the point of revelation is keep your mouth closed. You can't tell everybody what God is doing for you. But watch this. <laughs> In the Bible, God told the children of Israel that they had already won the victory against Jericho. But in order to receive it, he told them to walk around the wall for seven days silently. Sil- say it was silently. The enemy is looking down over the wall. They don't know what's going on. You don't go out there and tell them, well, God told us to walk around on the seven. No, no, you don't tell the enemy that. You let the enemy be confound. You just keep walking. Get home in the evening. Have yourself some dinner. Go lay down. Wake up the next morning and keep walking. Go home that night. Get you something to eat. Lay down and sleep. Do that for six days. And on the seventh day, oh my God. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. They worried now for sure, Dr. Hyatt. Because they saw God bring them over the Red Sea. They saw him bring them through the Jordan. They already scared. And they see these guys walking around and say, what mean is this? What kind of strategy is this? It's a God shift. Watch this out. They had no idea that the same angel of the Lord that came, he said, listen, you do what you're supposed to do on the outside, we do what we're going to do on the inside. Watch that. So on the seventh day when they marched around and Joshua gave the order, shout for God has given us the city. The Bible said that the walls came coming and down. They didn't just fall down on their own. That was God in the supernatural realm. He was doing this thing. Listen, the natural can't stand against the supernatural. When the supernatural shows up, the walls come tumbling down. Look at somebody and say, if you want victory, you got to get in the supernatural of God. Can somebody give God a praise? God, my God, my God, my God. Watch this. Your manifestation is in your silence. You let God manifest. You just keep quiet. I'm going to tell you this like I told many people. Don't you ever live your life as an explanation. You don't need to explain everything to everybody. I ain't going to waste my time explaining to you why I do what I do and how I live. Listen, I'm going to do what God say do. 
and then when God do it, then you'll find out what God was doing. I ain't got to explain to you why God put me on a fast. I don't have to explain to you why God is telling me to do this and say this and read this. I don't have to say that. All I got to do is keep on walking and keep on praying. Because in my silence, God is working behind the scene. He's messing with my enemy's minds. And in the end, those walls will come tumbling down. Look at somebody and say, down, down, down. The walls are coming down. Come on, say, down, down, down. The walls are coming down. Say it again. Down, down, down. The walls are coming down. Your enemies are being defeated. You're walking into the city. You're going toward the promised land. Look at somebody and say, my God, shift is happening now. Tell somebody it's happening right now. It's happening right now. I can't see it, but I can feel it. I can embrace it. I know what God said. I stand in awe of an almighty God. Oh, I wish I had 10 people that would stand to your feet this morning and give God a praise. Oh, yes. Sit down for just two minutes. Just two minutes. Watch that. Watch that. Stop telling people all your plans in your God shift. Stop advertising your struggles. Stop advertising how you struggle with what God has told you and what he's shown to you. So what is God saying? He's saying to you this morning in the shift, just follow my word. Just follow my instructions. Keep quiet. Look at your neighbor. God is telling you this. You got this. Come on, tell your neighbor, be quiet. Follow God's command. You got this. Because if I serve God, and God tells me he got this, that means I can tell you, I got this. Come on and tell somebody, I got this. I might not can do it on my own, but I know a God that can do it. And if he got it, I got it. Look at somebody else and say, God got this. I got this. You got this. We got this. Put your hands together and give God a praise. Yes. Yes. We got this. Yes. Yes. We got this. We got this. We got it. We got it. We got it. We got it. We got this. Yes. My God, my God, my God. Two minutes, two minutes. You see, Jericho was a city that stood between the wilderness and the promise. There was no way around it and no way to avoid it. You better get this in your spirit. While you're walking on your way to your destiny, there's a Jericho in your life. You can't go around it and you can't avoid it. You can't pray yourself out of it. You can't talk yourself away from it. You got to go through it. Because God wants you to awe him. Huh? And God is about to do something in the supernatural. Look at somebody and say, I'm trusting God. Watch it. You see, a God will always take you through situations that prove that if life brings it to you, God is going to bring you through it. Come on. Look at somebody and say, I don't know what you're going through. But if God brought it to you, God is going to bring you through it. Now, I'm going to calm down now because I need to tell you something important. Now is the time for you to put drama on time out. See, that, that, that part I don't want to preach. I want to talk that part. It's time. Look, look at this, the neighbor. It's now time for you to put drama on time out. Watch that. I'm talking about the drama you cause to yourself and the drama you let other people cause to you. Look at your neighbor and say, when you see drama walking into your life, press pause. Come on. And, and walk away. You know, when we and Lady Catherine and I are watching the TV and, and we've got stuff we need to do, Lady Catherine say, can you put that on pause? I say, yeah, we put it on pause and we walk away. Listen, that's what you got to do sometimes with people that get on your nerve. That's what you got to do sometimes that everybody's not nurturing where you're going. You got to press pause. You got to stop the drama inside of your life. You got to let it not be a part of You can choose who you let come into your life. So in the name of Jesus, say it with me. Today, I press pause on all drama because you see there are some relationships you need to detach from listen let me tell you this 
There are some relationships that have an expiration date on it. There, there are some relationships that you can keep close, but there are some that have expiration dates. Sometimes God brings people in your life for a season. And when that season is over, that means it's expired. And don't you pray back in what God's trying to release out of your life. Look at somebody and say, I saw the expiration date. And if I go beyond the expiration date, I'm going to get sick. Anybody ever drunk some milk that went beyond the expiration date? You drank it and you got sick. Your stomach started hurting. Your head started hurting. Your body started hurting. Because you drunk something beyond its expiration date. There are some people that's causing you hurt. It's expired. There are some people that's causing you pain. It's expired. Look at your neighbor and say, it's time to release. Oh, let me go now. Here's the next thing. 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 Don't let temporary emotions make permanent decisions in your life. Don't let temporary emotions make permanent decisions inside of your life. See, that's where you need to be still. You need to be still and know that God is who he is. See, any decision you make emotionally is a bad decision. But let me tell you something about a temporary emotional decision. The, the, the emotion is temporary, but the decision, the decision is permanent. It leaves scars on you. So watch this now. I'm going somewhere with this. I'm going, I'm going. Everything that's happening, good, bad, or indifferent, is happening because God is trying to shift you into position to walk inside your promise. It is a promise that's designed specifically for you. Eternal life is for us all. But there is a specific design, a promise on your life that God expects you to walk in and walk toward. He's not going to give it to nobody else because he designed it for you. This is your season to correct some things inside of your spirit. This is your season to reconsecrate yourself because God is ready to speak. God is ready to revitalize that vision. He's ready to revitalize that dream. He wants you to seek after those dreams and visions that he placed inside of your heart. Don't try to do other people's dreams. Don't walk in anyone else's destiny. God's destiny is your destiny because if you're busy trying to be somebody else, who's busy trying to be you? to your feet. I'm done. It's 12. Put your hands together for the Lord Jesus Christ. Well. Say it with me. The God shift. The God shift. Every head is bowed. Every eye is closed. And the people of God are praying. God found you faithful through the hell and high waters of life, through the stresses and the struggles of life. God has seen what people has done to you. God has seen what they've done through you. He's also seen the work you put into your faith. He know you're trying. Keep your head up while you're in the God shift in the name of Jesus. Keep walking. While you're in your divine God shift in the name of Jesus. The prayers and the hopes that you've been watering with your tears are about to produce a supernatural harvest. So in the name of Jesus, Father, I pray over this house, everyone that's standing in your presence. We recognize that we are all in a God shift today. And Father, the seeds of destiny, the seeds of our prayers that we are watered with our tears are about to bring us a supernatural harvest, something that we couldn't do on our own. And so this morning, I pray this prayer for every person standing and praying that there be a release, a supernatural release inside of your mind, inside of your spirit, inside of your body if you need healing for your health inside of your mind for your emotional well-being that there be a supernatural release inside your relationships that there be reconciliation 
that there's a supernatural release inside of your home that God will bring peace that he will keep all of your your needs under under one covering that God will bless you that you don't have to worry that God will begin to bring a supernatural harvest to your workplace to your careers to your finance all of your resources in the name of Jesus God will begin to give supernatural resources and healing and harvest over your entire life from this day forward because now you're walking inside of your God shift and right now in Jesus name your enemies know the God that you serve they're in awe of God Satan knows God he's in awe of God he's hoping that you're not in awe of God and so this morning let the awe of God rise up inside of you and I need you to believe that everything you need from God God is already fixing it God is already bringing it stand in awe of God everything that you desire every stress every tension that need to be relieved God is already working it out he's sending a soldier an angel of the Lord your way God is moving right now all over this place God is touching your life God is touching every experience God is revealing to you what he's doing God is releasing you into your new season he's releasing you into that divine Godship and so in Jesus name right now we put Satan on notice that he is now the tail and we are the head we put him on notice that he's now under our feet that we walk all over him we put him on notice that we walk in the spirit of victory that God has already prepared the ground for our victory in the name of Jesus now if you believe that say amen with me and put your hands together and give God some glory give God some praise give God a hallelujah come on give God a praise in this house give God a praise in this house come on give God a praise Raise the rafters in this place and let the devils in hell know that you believe in an awesome God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I want you to grab hands with your neighbor. And I want you to speak these words with me. I believe the word of God. I trust in the awesome God. And so in Jesus' strong name, I declare and I decree that I am and you are in a God shift. And you're going to walk by faith and not by sight. I receive my blessing by faith. I receive my healing by faith. I receive my promotion by faith. I receive my relationship healed by faith. I receive my days as being blessed in Jesus' name. I receive that this is the day that the Lord has made and I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to be glad in it. I'm not going to let anybody take my praise. I'm going to bless God with all of my heart, with all of my soul. Now all of God's people, put your hands together and give him a praise. Yes! Hallelujah! I want to sing this song as a declaration that we are embracing the word of God this morning for ourselves and that we are going to walk in the God shift. You know that word, amen? It means that it's settled. Say it with me, it's settled. How many believe the word of God this morning? That God is shifting some things around on your behalf. So we're going to sing this song very quickly before we, we do our offertory. Simple song, very simple song by Andre Crouch. It goes like this, it says, let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. Let the church say amen. Come on, sing it, brother. Let the church say amen. Let the church 
Sing with up the voice of voices this morning. Let the church sing. one more time with all of your heart sing it now sing come on church let the church let the church everybody sing God so let the church Put your hands together and say it's settled. In the name of Jesus, is it settled? Amen. We pray you were blessed by this worship experience at Gateway Church. Make sure you share this word with your family and friends. If you'd like to sow into our ministry financially, there are four ways you can give. First, through text giving. Just text the amount using the dollar sign to 855-905-0862. And follow the prompts. You will receive a confirmation text thanking you for your generous giving. The second way is through our Gateway Church website. That's www.mygatewaychurchfl.org. Just select the Give Online tab and follow the prompts to your giving instructions. We also offer Scan to Give using the camera on your phone. Just scan the QR code to be directed to our Gateway Church website. Lastly, you can always mail in your donations, tithes, and offerings to Gateway Church, 2130 Northwest 26th Street, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33311. Once again, we thank you for your continued generosity to Gateway Church. Until next time, remember, share this word, stay connected by following us on Facebook, and subscribing to our YouTube channel at Gateway Church FL. May God continue to bless you and keep you. Until our next digital gathering.